Welcome to What's Left, a weekly political discussion challenge in the mainstream left. I'm Eduardo Barca with Andy Lipson. Today we will discuss the topic of uh, CRISPR and, uh, did you say genetic engineering, right? Mm -hmm. Genetic engineering and the implications of it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, something that we have decided to choose after I read something, mm -hmm. uh, National Geographic, and I thought it was very interesting and uh, and then I, I thought about it more, and then I thought about how this could really have long-term effects in the shadow of eugenics, mm -hmm. in the shadow of designer babies and desired characteristics and, and future consequences of this. So this is how I, I, I thought of it. Uh, I'd like to know what you kind of your thoughts. So I mean, right, so when I asked you, I said, "What about this, Andy?" Yeah, no. At, at first, I was like, hmm, "I'm not sure," but the more I thought about what you were saying, I thought about science and capitalism. I thought about science and the profit system. I thought about this is actually an area that I used to be involved in. Actually, not, not directly. I was more involved in the structural biology area, although some of the stuff that's being done around. Well, we're going to hear about this protein called Cas9. They have a lot of structural information and and. That was the kind of research I used to do. Um, mm. I'm not in Cas9, but so it was actually an opportunity to kind of uh, get back into um, looking at what is up to date in biotechnology. When I was in this field, they were not able to do these sorts of things. It was more about putting little plasmids into bacteria. The genetic and the genetic engineering they did at that point was much more crude and rudimentary. Mm. Um, although genetic manipulation has gone on for quite some time. Uh, yes, yes. In, hu in human in U.S. or human history. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, well, just to quickly tell the audience, that, just to remind everyone, you teach science in high school. Yeah. But before that, I mean, you are a scientist. You right. Before that, you were in research. Correct. I did research science in a, a field at, at uh, Johns Hopkins University in a field called uh, biophysics. Mm. And I did what, something called X-ray crystallography of proteins, which basically allows you to look, see where the atoms are located in a, on these proteins, or often their enzymes to figure out how these giant molecules are able to do what they do. They're, these are just like giant, amazing chemical factories that do very specific chemistry. It's the reason why uh, Monsanto and all these companies are so interested in it, is it allows potentially uh, the idea of, of doing chemical reactions with virtually no uh, side products or byproducts, except for the one you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is why I so I, I just said where the topic is on, on CRISPR. So I'm going to just briefly just say what it is. Mm -hmm. And then I would like for you, if it's possible, given the background you have, yeah. to sort of just give us a, um, a summary on, on the, uh, some details that might be necessary in for our discussion. And so CRISPR is this, uh, and you, you'll, again, you will say the details, but CRISPR was invented by um, uh, just, uh, just for an alteration of a specific DNA in the mammalian genome. And there are multiple gene editing um, tools, but CRISPR is the, by far the most effective and precise. It, it, was, uh, it works by injecting the DNA construct with three major components into living organisms, which I'd like for you to delve into. Um, and um, yeah, so give us okay. a, 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 syn a synopsis. Well, let me go a little bit backwards here first. And um, we're gonna take some time to describe this stuff a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, there's some video, and I'm going to put pictures in some of these things. So if you want to watch this on YouTube, we're, there's mm -hmm. going to be pictures. But um, it's worth it first to first talk about the f three parts, the major pieces of anything that's put together in terms of cells, and then tissues that are combinations of cells. Really, you're talking about three things. You're talking about DNA, RNA, and proteins. Hmm. There are other things. There's like a phospholipid around a cell and things like that. It doesn't fit into that area. But the three major parts of the whole functioning of things are DNA, RNA, and proteins. And um, DNA is the is like the the blueprint, the mm -hmm. the, the, the 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 scaffold, or no, it's not. It's the blueprint for what's going to be done. If if you're making if if what you're trying to do is make a movie, DNA is the film. You know, RNA is like the projector. It's the thing that reads the film, and then there's another process that has to happen with the intersection of the 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 film plus the projector to make that that picture on the screen and that picture on the screen is like your proteins okay so the process for really and proteins are the whole game for uh what ha, getting your cells to do the things they do um different cells 
that do different things, have different proteins that allow them to perform that function. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff is encoded within your DNA. The decision to whether or not that stuff's going to be read means some RNA has to come, has to, has to be read off of that DNA. Then that RNA is used to, to be turned into protein. Um, and all these three terms, DNA, RNA, and protein, are going to come into play when we talk about CRISPR. Mm -hmm. um, because CRISPR's real, real's, real origin was in bacteria. Mm. Um, it's, um, it, it was, it was identified, basically at some point there was, it was identified that, well, bacteria's main enemy and main opponent is not humans, it's viruses. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that often have killed bacteria. So bacteria have, turns out, have found a way to protect themselves from, from viruses. And, it, and they use these, what are called CRISPR uh, sequences, which are clustered, regu regular, clustered, regularly interspersed short palindromic, palindromic repeats. Mm. So think of it as, what they mean is, is there are these repeated sections that are clustered near each other, mm. um, and those repeated sections in between them are interspersed um, palindromic repeats. Um, mm. and, it, um, and in between those repeats, uh, these palindromic repeat, repeats, are these sequences of DNA that it turned out this, that this, this DNA that was in between these repeats was not native to the was not native to the bacteria, but was actually uh, the DNA of of, uh, of viruses. And so these sequences that were in between these repeats were actually ways that this um, bacteria would save itself from from uh, from, from viruses. Because mm -hmm. what would happen is if a virus came in and shot its DNA inside of the b bacteria. The bac if the bacteria had a sequence of that same DNA inside of it, because it was, it was kind of like, hey, this is my blueprint for, for protecting myself, this, uh, these Cas proteins um, would come along, read it, and then the Cas protein would join up with the RNA that comes, gets ripped off. Uh, so you have that DNA, then you have the RNA that's read, and then the RNA plus these Cas proteins would go over to the, the, virus, pro to the virus DNA and start cutting it and, and break it apart. Mm. So it was basically immune to the, um, uh, it's immune to that virus. Mm. And so you could go through, if you looked at the different sequences in between those repeated uh, palindromes, mm. then you could see, it was sort of like a, it's like, it's, a, it's, like a car, it's like a card that it has for, here's what I'm immune to in terms of viruses. Mm. If you have that sequence of DNA, then you're immune to it. And it turned out that what, 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 was, um, what was done by this woman, uh, Jennifer D Doudna, Doudna from UC mm -hmm. Berkeley, mm -hmm although there's, there's a big controversy over who really started this, mm. was what they did was they turned that bacterial um, ability to defend itself into a little tool to basically uh, uh, clip out s uh, specific sequences of DNA, mm -hmm. okay? Um, because the way they, the way they did this um, is they, they basically found that they could use this bacterial DNA cutting um, uh, mechanism in any sort of uh, non-bacterial cell, uh, what are called eukaryotic cells, cells that have uh, a bacteria just has DNA running around inside of like spaghetti, like open spaghetti. Mm -hmm. A eukaryotic cell, like we are eukaryotes, basically we have a cell membrane and we have another little thing called a nucleus that we have our DNA inside of. And so this was actually able to, this same uh, method was able to be used to um, express the Cas9 protein and the Cas9 protein is the DNA clipping protein. And then she was able to basically create a hi an RNA hybrid. One would be the piece of RNA that the, that the protein has to recognize to say, I'm going to go find a sequence. And then there was a second sequence attached of RNA that is, the, that is the part that it's going to be recognized and then clipped. And the clipping is done by the Cas9 protein. Yeah. So this is what is put inside of these eukaryotic uh, proteins, whether it be yeast, whether it be a mouse, whether it be a monkey, whether it be a human embryo. Um, and it's it basically uh, when they when they put these uh, sequences, this RNA sequence, which is specifically made, and it's very easy to make RNA sequences, and they and they combine it with this Cas protein, which does the cutting. It goes directly to that piece of DNA that corresponds to the sequence that they want. It cuts it. Um, which it's called what's called a blunt cut. It doesn't make a, a jagged cut on the two strips. It, remember, DNA has two pieces, and it makes a blunt cut, so it breaks into two pieces. And then it, you either insert your own new DNA inside of there, 
or you cut it and, and have it repair itself, and then you've essentially you know, you've disrupted what that, that, that DNA sequence from operating. Um, you can change single, single nucleotides if you want this way. So it's a very, uh, it's a very specific instrument for cutting and replacing DNA sequences inside of the cell. Um, mm. So that would be my initial overview of how this works. Hang on with us, okay. folks. Please hang on with us because this is very important. Everything that Andy, you just described is important because this is revolutionary, mm -hmm. very revolutionary. And I will tell our audience why it's revolutionary because just to mention two things that can hold your interest because the science topic sometimes people can get a little bit uh, just to mention this is revolutionary in the sense that it has implications for how we can deal with malaria uh, with uh, uh, same-sex uh, couples that are trying to have children and this is a lot of things uh, that it, it can really uh, affect right uh, gen genetic based diseases mm -hmm. uh, could then be potentially eliminated um, cur currently, all we have are screens for those genetic diseases. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about the possibility of eliminating those things in humans. You're talking about doing very specific um, uh, DNA engineering with plants mm -hmm. um, to create, you know, uh, vulnerability to certain things or to get certain um, certain crop properties that you want in that plant. So it's it's very specific. And uh, if you can identify a trait and you can identify where it's located on the that trait is located on the DNA sequence of some organism, then you have a tool that can right there go in and make very, very either uh, big modifications of that protein or of that, of that thing, or even very subtle modifications mm. if you, what you want to do is something very subtle. So it's a very, um, potentially, uh, it's a very, um, uh, well, I th useful tool, but mm -hmm. this is capitalism. We'll talk about that. Yeah, and before we get to capitalism, yeah. I, 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 did you want to add anything else to this explanation? Um, I would just say that w it's not DNA modification uh, has been going on for centuries. Mm -hmm. um, you can go back to uh, the guy who worked the flowers, Mendel, mm -hmm. um, Mendel. Mm -hmm. right? And so that 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 is G DNA modification. But basically, you're talking about a person breeding things, looking for traits and breeding things. It's led to all these different species of dogs. Um, mm -hmm. This is what, instead of called natural selection, it's called artificial selection. Mm -hmm. Humans mm -hmm. have been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. Then later humans learned that you could use radiation or, or chemicals to alter something's DNA. Um, and, uh, and then we, so, but that would do it in a very random scattershot mm -hmm. way. It led to the idea of like the X-Men being created, like super mutants and things like that. Mm -hmm. So producing superpowers, which I don't think it will ever do. Um, By the way, Andy's a very big fan of comics yes, and I Marvel. Yes, I, I love those MC. <laughs> Endgame. Yeah, that was a good movie. A good movie. Good. I didn't like the first time I saw it. Anyway. Um, so, uh, uh, and and then, well, no, and then there have been genetic modifications that, that can go on. They had little plasmids you could insert into bacteria that then you could possibly use, like gene therapy methods, but they were v not very targeted. Mm. Uh, this is the first time you can literally put crosshairs right on that piece of mm. DNA and get it. There are still issues. I do know that Cas9 plus the CRISPR, the CRISPR-Cas9 um, uh, combination in some cells doesn't work, and some cells goes to different, the wrong section and cuts it and things like that. So they don't know why that goes on, and that's still a, a problem. And I even think of the issue of the malaria curing the method they would do for that has some really scary implications mm. uh, in ta terms of what's called gene, the gene, dr uh, gene drive. I don't know if you heard about that. No, okay. we'll I haven't this one. No. Th we'll talk about that later, I think. You know, right. but, um, but, uh, it's, um, but yes, getting rid of malaria or like uh, the tick. What's that? The deer tick? Um, yeah, um, Lyme's disease. Lyme's disease. Like uh, getting rid of ticks that have Lyme's disease. These are potential uses they have. But the way they'll have to do it to do it is effing scary. And uh, you can kind of imagine how this could be very much weaponized to go after, in the same way that the United States went after um, crops uh, using Agent Orange in v Vietnam. Now you could be talking- Monsanto. Yes, now you can talk about going after species that are native to China, species that are native to Russia, uh, and wiping them out. Mm. But then you don't really know what's gonna happen beyond that because this can't be controlled. It's like, um, what's that dinosaur movie? Uh, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park mm -hmm. like, like writ, writ large. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Well, just in, 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 in what you're saying, I'm just going to list out some things that have been uh, thought that could be done with this mm -hmm. with this uh, biotechnology. I'm not going to go into depth. I'm going to depth, not depth, depth, <laughs> my English. I'm not going to go into depth, but I will link this um, article that I found on two magazines. I'm just going to read the list of sort of revolutionary things that people are, have been um, playing with uh, using this biotechnology. Uh, so these are uh, listed under 11 crazy gene hacking things we can do with CRISPR. And this is uh, uh, remove malaria from mosquitoes, eliminate a patient's cancer, uh, treat muscular dystrophy, dystrophy, yes. Mm -hmm. um, make Hulk, hulked out goats and dogs. This is <laughs> Chinese big. scientists that have used CRISPR to delete genes and inhibit muscle and hair growth. Um, that, that um, could be potentially for commercial meat and wool. Um, but it's also, again, it's another form of another, a lot of consequences that could happen with that because we ingest these things as well. Mm -hmm. um, give pigs organ, give pig organs to humans. Uh, that is something that Harvard Medical School recently has, I, I'm just mentioning little ones that I'm curious of, a team of scientists that used a uh, complex CRISPR molecule to edit six to 62 genes in pig cells at once. Mm -hmm. And uh, they believe that these organs can be used for um, um, people to replace it, like kidney failure and mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. uh, treat HIV, which I will discuss uh, one case in particular that has made a lot of woo ha in the media. Uh, it's develop new kinds of drugs, uh, make super plants, you were mentioning that. Uh, engineer uh, mini pigs, that's for people, you know, uh, people can do all kinds of... Uh, like I have a nice pet. Yes. yes. Uh, treat blindness, blindness uh, edit humans, uh, which is what I really want to talk about later. Designer humans. Basically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the gene editing techniques have already been used in humans. Um, so uh, we will go into that. And um, the other one is that uh, uh, treat al Alzheimer's disease. Um, um, let's see. And uh, uh, new cancer treatments, as I, I had said. Oh, and one that was interesting to me was reduce our need for plastic uh, because CRISPR can be used to manipulate a type of yeast that transforms sugars into hydrocarbons, which can be used to make plastic, greatly reducing the need to rely on petroleum-based resources for mm -hmm. plastics, easing stress on the environment. Mm -hmm. So those are just some of the things that I think if people can find interesting. The one I found the most interesting, which is I just called Andy immediately, was when I had read the National Geographic one for uh, same-sex... Uh, couples could potentially have, uh, it was just a headline, could potentially have uh, children. They were testing um, two female mice uh, to uh, give, uh, to be able, it's complicated, I'm not going to go into it now, but just they were able to eventually have uh, offspring of their own uh, using this technology. But it didn't work, work very well with uh, the two male mice because the pups died. But uh, this is something that could be potentially used in the future. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> I yeah. Go ahead. And just to say something yeah, about um, uh, one thing to know. Uh, obviously, there's a there's a there's a lot of people who there's some people who have real concerns or real difficulties with using animals for science and things yes, like that, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and there are some things that are I think are wrong that are done. Like I remember some animals being burned to like then figure out how to treat burn victims and oh <clears throat> things that are just unnecessary. Um, but also do know this is that. Um, uh, Whenever they use rats, or when they use pigs, or when they use dogs, or cats, or monkeys, essentially what science has is what they have are, are animal models for. And what they're saying is, these are the animals that, when we, that, that we think are closest to us with regards to these certain illnesses, with regards to these certain uh, uh, features, or these certain effects. So for some things, like pigs are better human models than monkeys, even though we might think of ourselves as closer to monkeys than pigs. Right. But for some treatments, to see whether humans will respond the same way, it might actually be better to see how the pig, the pig, pigs respond to it versus the monkeys. Mm. So just know that, like, they, they, they basically when you're getting to human testing, they've got to climb the ladder, you know, and there are ideas about which, which type of animal is a better model uh, for for humans, with that, that is, will likely have closer to the human-like response to this treatment. Um, and most of the time, it's a monkey, but sometimes it's other it's other animals. I just want that's that's how this works in science, at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so just they're 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 usually starting down. They start down here with the bacteria and the yeast, 
and then they move up to the more complex organisms. Um, obviously, mice are more complex, and uh, then they move up the scale from there. Mm -hmm. Thank you for yeah. The ethics of using animals, I think, is important. To yeah, use. I mean, I'm, I did not get really into that ethics yeah. part, but that is how it works in science. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do feel like there's some unnecessary stuff that goes on in science, but mm -hmm. I do, I'm not against using animals in science as a way of learning. Um, but you're talking about the unnecessary correct, usage. Correct. Right. 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 Uh, so mm -hmm. then let's talk of g segueing into ethics. <laughs> and can we... Maybe yes. since, since so, yeah, might, any, yeah. yeah, can we go to the maybe the malaria example because so I can talk a little bit about please the gene do drive. Okay. no please because that's just one area here that I, I yeah so um, and I actually like to know because I, I I couldn't read all of these it's just the yeah. ones that caught my attention so the theory about how they would get rid of malaria is malaria has to be carried by the mosquito mm. right and so if you can get make a malaria resistant mosquito then good right mm -hmm. and so what they do they have the DNA sequence that gives its malaria that gives it malaria resistance and they just stick it right inside there and they can use CRISPR to get it inside there, mm. okay? This CRISPR uh, package, mm. okay? But the problem is, is now you've got some mosquitoes but you've got to, you've got to get all your mosquitoes doing that. Mm -hmm. So which means the rough model, if everything works the normal way of, of genetics, is if you were gonna, if you were gonna try to get, t change 10,000 mosquitoes, you need like 100,000 of these other mosquitoes to change that. That's an overwhelming, that's a massive amount, right? Mm. Well, here's what they've done with CRISPR to really goose the gene drive. What they've done is not only did they use CRISPR to insert the malaria resistance, but attached to that is malaria resistance plus its own CRISPR package encoded on its DNA. So when that, when that, when that mosquito has, has kids, all its kids will have the CRISPR mm -hmm. that will insert that sequence into it. So all the kids get it no matter what. It's not like 50-50 chance. It's a hundred percent chance, mm -hmm. and so what this meant was that you don't need that many mosquitoes with this DNA sequence plus CRISPR attachment to create a massive effect of mos of all your mosquitoes around you suddenly having that same DNA sequence. Mm -hmm. So that's a massive exponential growth rate. That's like that's like a chain reaction of a nuclear detonation kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the The fear is if we don't actually know what the implications of some mm -hmm. of these things are. It's not just going to be in one of these in one town in Africa or something like that. These things fly; they go around. You can basically imagine, not even within a generation of humans, within a year, all your all your native species could be wiped out, and basically you have this new species everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you better know what you're doing with that, and you also better know that if you're working in that area, that this thing doesn't escape, because we are now dealing with something which, if it gets out, and they don't know exactly what the implications are when you attach CRISPR to the, uh, to the gene that you're trying to change, you better know those effects and you better make sure everything's sealed because if that thing gets out, you can wipe out whole species and, and there's nothing you can do. They're literally, it, it's like, it's out, it's out of your hands now. Um, and it, this gene drive method that comes as a result of CRISPR is a complete knockout as it relates to, we could knock out, the, the, we could create only malaria resistant mosquitoes but the implications of it, of, of how I really think it's going to be used, mm -hmm. are really in the area of we're going to knock out whole fishing species uh, or rice, uh, rice, types of rice that's grown in China mm -hmm. uh, using this. Things like that. That's how I foresee, um, I mean, maybe it wouldn't be rice because you'd have to have a fly, but something, I, I foresee much more pernicious use of these things. And um, as well as accidental things. I think we have seen some version of that when we think of genetically modified crops such as corn, which yeah. pollinates through wind, mm -hmm. and corn has affected even like in Mexico, uh, genetically modified corn that has been uh, grown in, the, in Mexico, in my country, where uh, you had very, uh, a variety and diverse um, um, corn seed, right. and then it has been affected because uh, corn is a cross-pollinator. So it really has affected farmers yeah. And their seed is now in, in affected um, mm -hmm. because it's uh, it's been touched, uh, tainted, or, or whatever okay. uh, by, by by other corn. Mm -hmm. And and then what happened in India with all the suicides? This is I'm going a little bit off. With the, in India, what happened with all the suicides because farmers were being um, uh, were being affected with this patent corn because mm. it was from Monsanto and Monsanto would go after anyone that was growing corn without their permission. Right. So and it would only have one season of growing and you'd have to always go back to Monsanto for another thing. Yes. Yeah. So um, for the seeds. Yes. So uh, 
I think this whole patent thing is stupid. By the way, I think yeah. it's just really just dis disruptive and and and, mm -hmm. and you know, people even tried to patent the DNA. But, but that is the important thing: is that the, that this is going to be controlled not by ultimately these things these things aren't controlled by humans; they're controlled by the drive for profit, mm -hmm. and they're going to be used mm -hmm. by that. That's what's really going to run agree. how these things get used. Yeah, but who, but but this is just corrupt. So imagine what you're talking about. We're moving into other areas yeah. and I think this is the reason why um, not that I think this is many of the reasons why scientists have come out for this case in the media that happened in China when a Chinese scientist remember I was telling you yeah. that uh, decided to test on embryos um, before they were born uh, on twins mm -hmm. uh, uh, to prevent uh, HIV uh, on these uh, genetically uh, Editing uh, their DNA mm -hmm. on, uh, on on to make them HIV resistant to make them HIV resistant, and it was an outpour of rage from the scientific community because you're there's a huge difference between taking some organ or this case I will say this where in the case of uh, humans where uh, an infant girl who was treated for le leukemia with engineered T cells that is like saying I'm going to fix this part of the computer right. versus fixing the entire computer. Because now those kids that that person has ha will have that same DNA. Yes. Th this isn't one person, you're not fixing one person's thing for their life. Exactly. You are exactly. setting in motion a generational change. Yes, because now they could have children. Right, and their children will have that change. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Or um, they can pass that on. Mm -hmm. And and this is, uh, now we're seeing, I just was reading recently that they are having other risks because we don't know what uh, things, what are the side effects of, of this. And the thing, I mean, I think what's happening, I think what's happening there is wrong. Um, my, the piece that I want to point out. I think I know where you're going. Well, <laughs> is <laughs> that, do you know what's happened in London recently? Do you know what London passed a law recently? This is in London, where they basically, base, they basically have opened up this whole area of embryo exploration that's going, that is right now going on in China. Why is that happening? But they don't let the embryo develop. Yeah, they do the seven days, but why are they doing that? I, I did read something about this, right. but, they, but they kill the embryo. There After is a, seven days, but they're opening yes. this up for themselves. They are opening this up. And the, why are they doing that? Is because this Jennifer Doudna, who's in UC Berkeley, is in competition with the other patent company, which actually looks like they're going to win the patent potential patent holder who looks like they're actually going to win if in all the K courses and they're originating in Britain. So this is about money and this is not about ethics yeah. and China ain't any better or any worse. But China was the only one that actually allowed for children to actually develop, right? But they're starting this, they're starting down the road in Britain. Yeah. Yeah. So why is that, why are people not going over, going crazy? This is not, uh, this is not the, the, the way that people are going nuts over here about China, China, look at their own irresponsible, is I very agree. much related to anti-Chinese sentiment as a result of U.S. imperial aims and the, the war we're trying to build yeah. up with them. Yeah, and so. there is something to say about that. Yes, you're right. And where I'm not apologizing. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying I, I call BS on the people who are talking about, oh, China is showing no... No uh, ethics, no resist. When they're they are beginning to open those very same doors in Britain, as they see this n this new pathway that they're going to be able able to open money on, and they're going to be a, in a in a big biotech, uh, great position around future of biotech industry because they I think they speculate the patent's going to come from them, not from the United States. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, I agree. You're right, and and. But we're not, I, I still believe that the ethics issue is there. It's just that I, yeah. I call BS on, oh, China. And why the ethics issue? Because, I, I, because of mm. what, everything that you just talked about as, as, as far as uh, the inheritance part. This is not just taking a part of your body to help you in some way. This is a whole generation. And, and yeah, go ahead. You should say more. And, and, and then we are going into designer babies yes. as well, uh, which brings up our dark past of history of uh, rudimentary forms of uh, gene editing, which wasn't through microscopic and laboratory extensive. So you're saying CRISPR, yeah. CRISPR editing of the human genome to produce, like, what kind of outcomes in well, humans? To produce uh, a certain kind of characteristics that are sought after that our society would deem or uh, a society 
in which if we look back in history that like Nazi Germany mm. they tried to do uh, produce at that time the, an the Arian, natural way an they Aryan Aryan right. race right. yeah right. and we have a history of that and people saying I want to make my baby re resistant to certain diseases I want to make them smarter in certain ways I want to make them stronger in certain ways faster in certain ways um, all these sorts of things but here's the important part to remember is in each case we have to say I want to do this but the question is can you afford it like mm -hmm. that that to me is going to is also going to be the big thing if if this is accessible to all the benefits like, like abortion it's like abortion class. rights mm -hmm. if it's ex if we're going to say this is accessible to all then I'm open to the ethics discussion mm -hmm. but if we're going mm -hmm. to say like. if we're going to say that all, this look these tr these things that we're going to be able to do for we say are, when they say we they don't mean we they mean rich people Mm -hmm. Rich people are the ones who are going to have access mm -hmm. to this because they talk about CRISPR being I inexpensive and easy at the lab level, but it ain't. And it is, uh, if you have the entire lab infrastructure around you, it is relatively inexpensive as a way of gene modification. But it is not going to be inexpensive to do this at the human level, with the hospital level, with all the stuff that's going to come in behind it. That's going to be very expensive. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, possibly millions of dollars for when people wanting these sorts of things. And that's going to be your entry price for having these kinds of kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're, ta we're talking about, a, again, a two-tier healthcare system mm -hmm. that's literally built, being built into the genes. Yeah. Um, it, it cannot possibly be done ethically if it's going to be done so um, un unequally. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be unequal because it's going to be there for the wealthy. If we could talk about everyone getting access to these things, it would change my discussion about what ethics what the ethics discussion would, would be then, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, that makes a difference Yeah, to me. I see what you're saying, that given in that slide, I, I, I think you don't even want to discuss ethics, you want to, yeah, I see what you're Almost. saying. Almost, yeah. how can it be done, it, it's like it, it can be done only unethically, because it's going to be done so in, une, unequally, mm -hmm. um, and if it happens to have some sort of Frankenstein, Frankenstein monster effect on the rich, I'm not happy about that, I'm not happy, but that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried that actually they are build they, they do build in things that's better for them again, that works for them again, hmm. and creates and creates literally a, a genetic divide between rich and poor in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I I uh, I think when uh, scientists are trying to convene together from internationally, this is not the discussion they are having. The, it is, or actually, Jennifer right. Doden does mention that when their moratorium, the inequality. Mm. But also, you should go ahead. No, tell me, I didn't hear. She her did. Time. She that was a piece of Jennifer access. Doden, Doden, uh -huh. it was access, and she, like, it's kind of like um, what's what's that dude with Tesla? Who's Tesla? Uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk is mm -hmm. like AI. We've got to like do something before the AI, the artificial. He wants to democratize AI because he's a concerned about AI taking over. And he's and he's a part of the AI development, or he's into that kind of stuff. This is a woman who has started down this road and helped unlock this thing, and mm. she sees what a Pandora's box has been opened. So she she has been calling for a scientific moratorium, um, and access is one of those things. Mm -hmm. But she's not she's not talking about the kind of access we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like we're talking about everyone. She's talking about well more, not just the rich, but maybe the middle class and maybe some wealthy workers. Mm. But she's not talking about people in, Arge in Argentina or in Nicaragua or Afghanistan. I mean, that's, I don't think she's, I mean, I think she might think she's talking about that, but you can't really talk about that unless you have a complete leveling and, e and equalizing mm -hmm. of all our situation here. Mm -hmm. um, you need, and that will require revolution. Mm -hmm. um, so I give her credit for that. Um, but just like the scientists who, who worked on the atomic bomb, mm -hmm. who thought that they were doing that with the idea that this thing will never be used, it will only be used as a threat. The minute that they made, the minute they made it, it's out of their hands. Mm -hmm. And by it, it was going to be used, and it wasn't just going to be used to end a war. It was going to be used as a threat to the Russians to say, you know, don't mess with us because we're going to we'll, we'll eliminate two hundred thousand people in a heartbeat, just like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, it's th these things that scientists create. They have no control over. Mm -hmm. This is this is nominally controlled controlled by the, the state that runs those labs, but even they, I would contend, don't have control over it because it's the profit system that will decide. So everyone who's talking about, let's see, figure out how we can deal with malaria right now, what's the discussion when we're at war with China? 
Yes. And uh, chemical warfare. Right. Then, the, then it's like, okay, we've got to protect ourselves, so we've got to, we've got to knock them out. And we've got to use everything we can to knock them out. And we'll have people here justifying eliminating species over there with this CRISPR gene. You know, yes. with that, those will be the, th the types of things people will be doing in labs. And they're probably already happening. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm sure many... And, and, and talk about the role of scientists. You were saying on, to me on the phone about their role, about they're just workers in this as well, because many have been used even to this day yes. as in chem labs today, creating these bombs in just the, the workforce right. for government. Science has a very ugly history in the name of progress, in the name of allowing itself to be used for some very ugly uh, racist purposes, eugenics, looking at the, 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 the cran cranium shapes of people to decide you know, whether you're valuable or not. You know, all sorts of science and measurement have been used in all sorts of ways uh, to, uh, to do really, uh, to justify negative things um, and it's it, it's a it really is it was a construction of capitalism that, that science and capitalism emerged together and currently science really is just a tool of capitalism and the capitalists it has to be liber liberated and democratized no less than workers do in order to really see what science can do because science has always been a tool of either warfare or they when they when they when they when when the scientists made robots and they said we're gonna make your life easier they didn't make anybody's life either. They just they, everyone's productivity increased, but other people had to work harder, and then other people lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. So, the promise that they give of these things does exist, but it doesn't exist under capitalism. It exists under some different kind of system. Would you say science and technology are a result of capitalism? Yeah, I, I mean they are, they are a product of it, and they have created the increased efficiency of capitalist production. Mm -hmm. But, but within the inequality of of, the, of that production. Science will, science will be of no real use to the working class until we have that revolution and we can put this under our reins and decide how humans can decide how we want to put this to use. Uh, we may, will make mistakes about that, but currently humans don't really get to decide. It is the interests of profit, the interests of imperial aims that drive profit. That's why war it plays in war so much. That is what will drive the use of these technologies, mm -hmm. is, is, for, is for somebody getting over on somebody else. Yes. And would you go as far to say as well that scientists have been exploited under capitalism? I mean, we, we are, I mean, as workers, but they're kind of, I mean, I think it's almost like a middle class. I would say we've been willing dupes and we've, and we've gotten our um, share of gold mm. out, of, out of performing the function we have for the capitalists. There, have, there are plenty of scientists. Einstein was a socialist. Um, there are plenty of so Oppenheimer came out later against the d nuclear bomb, but too often we just get played like chumps, yeah. and it happens too often for me to f forgive scientists for this, you yeah, know. Yeah. But I will give this woman credit, you know. I think she's trying to do the right thing, but she's trapped in a system that she does not understand yeah. is going to drive this thing. Her moratorium is going to get run over like a like a Mack truck, yeah. because this is what that I, I did do an interview with that that Chinese scientist who did this embryo work. He said. Look, if I don't do this, somebody else is going to do it. That's true. And don't, isn't that what every damn capitalist says? Yeah. If I don't do it, someone's going to do it, why not me? Mm -hmm. You know, and they're right, actually. They're actually right. That's why this can't he be. He did say that. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> All right. Well, let's segue into the part where I, I have told you that this is important to me. Mm -hmm. Why? And one of the reasons why you and I wanted to do this, one of, well, yeah. my reason, yeah. really, was because of racism that we had discussed, that I wanted to discuss. You know? mm -hmm. And I think we need to really look into uh, this as, this in the context of the U.S. American history here. Before Nazism, there was eugenics. Before na This is before the time of Nazis here mm -hmm. in the USA. Mm -hmm. There was an article in the eugenics magazine uh, where Harry Laughlin was this person who said, the Nazis consulted us before we consulted the Nazis. Mm. This is where the Nazis were inspired by their ideas. I saw this by a great author that I will put a link to on your favorite show, Democracy Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. <laughs> yeah. so we learned about CRISPR. <laughs> I'd like to tease Andy about this. <laughs> 
<laughs> people who have been following us will know the inside joke. Um, but the point being is that Harry Laughlin is the one who said this about Nazis. And I found that very interesting that even FDR even considered Japanese as sort of a race that we don't need. Hmm. FDR, a very great, um, and yeah. uh, supposedly great, I should, because no one can see my <laughs> quotes on the uh, deal. <laughs> so they probably think I'm thinking FDR yeah. is great. Uh, um, uh, beloved, though. Beloved yeah. person yeah, here yeah. in the US, yeah. uh, even by Bernie Sanders. No? Mm. So we were discussing, um, we were discussing uh, um, all the repercussions that could happen potentially um, with species no mm -hmm. and we have seen some repercussions that have happened with crops just with uh, gen uh, gen genetically modified organisms and mm -hmm. um, GMOs um, and now I want to move into well, what about human editing that is what I, I I was interested in this as well and Richard Dawkins came out on this as well I saw mm -hmm. an interview on, on YouTube and this is where we uh, begin having uh, one of the cousins of Dor Charles Darwin. Um, his name was, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Este, oh. Francis Galton was um, one of the fathers, founding fathers of this idea that you, we could, uh, that natural selection happens out there and survival of the fittest from Darwin's findings. And he thought, well, what will we do with this? How can we have this here on humans? And that is how he thought we could have, uh, um, we could accelerate mm. a form of natural selection by having a better race. Exactly. A and master race. Yes. Mm. And Herbert Spencer, actually, in that time as well, this is the late 1800s, early 1900s, mm. even said, this is why we shouldn't even have any class laws, even child labor laws because we should have the survival of the fittest. People should just work it out to survive. Yes. Yeah. So I thought that'd be very interesting because you're yeah. a socialist and I thought Herbert Spencer should be mentioned yeah. because of that. That hands off because let it, let it, let who capitalism survives? rip. Or the hunger games. Yes, right. 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 Um, so this is where eugenics came from. It's, it's, it's from that Darwinism thought theory of, uh, a, a, art, of potentially artificially uh, selecting the human race which involved sterilization he studied as well just like Mendel uh, the plants um, the pea plants as well as twins to see if it was nature versus nurture to see which was the greatest factor he did not actually believe that it was nurture he thought it was nature that people <coughs> were inherently smart mm -hmm. because he thought this idea of genius he used the <coughs> in, 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 I forgot the word he used with an E, imminence or impetus or something with brilliance, the synonym, mm. synonymous word with brilliance, but... Mm. Enlightenment. No, it wasn't mm. this one. It was another word, but <coughs> I thought that the genius, this idea of genius uh, was to be um, something that should be sought out for, something that we should all seek to thrive, uh, mm. to, to have in our society. And mm -hmm. so he believed that in, this is the only form to have that was you have to have at the time, British gentlemen only breed with other people to have uh, the same sort of hereditary um, smartness. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you were quote unquote feeble minded. Mm -hmm. And that term was here used in the USA to create laws to sterilize women mm. if you were feeble minded or if you had mm. people in your family that were feeble minded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is where that has, because of that origin and the root of that, that spread like fire in the USA. And we have enacted laws to test that out, to even sterilize. And even as far as recently, recently, in this state, in California, in 2014, there was, it was allowed legally to still sterilize uh, in, in prisoners mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. 2014, mm -hmm. when they just enacted a law to say that no more sterilization. In 2014, we're in 2019, I think right. people really need to get this across, the message across it. This is still high. the 70s. This isn't 100 years ago. Sterilization of women, um, sterilization of women, <coughs> especially immigrant women. And there was an author as well that talked about the immigrants that were coming here, who were the better Caucasians of all the Caucasians and that were coming through Ellis Island mm -hmm. and pitting white against white for their for their races for their for ethnic backgrounds excuse me and so 
this is this is what uh, this was like I said spread like fire in the USA mm. and what, like I already mentioned that the Nazis got inspired by all of this uh, eugenics movement here in the and that started off from este um, what's his face Francis, Francis Cotton. and then uh, spread like fire in the, in the USA mm. so that is a brief history and look where we are now, now here in that dark history we're talking about CRISPR what are the implications of human editing mm -hmm. and these cold new words of designer babies mm -hmm. that we are not saying what the neo-eugenics could be, mm -hmm. right? And that is what I am afraid of mm -hmm. because just like you mentioned with malaria, with the species and then inherit, you, you can have this, we could be messing up humans as well, but in a different way because we're looking for uh, a certain characteristics such as the Nazis were doing for Aryan race when they were measuring even Jews or Polish people that could pass for German, the the the, uh, the right German with the uh, blue-eyed blonde mm -hmm. hair, uh, measuring noses, measuring body parts, uh, because they were sought out for, uh, even though Hitler himself did not look like that. But mm -hmm. you know, and that is that that's what CRISPR could potentially delve yeah. into. Yeah, and you're putting you're putting a tool with that immense power in the hands of people who don't have the responsibility to use it in any and in, in a system I should say that doesn't it cannot cannot be trusted to use it responsibly. Yeah. So I think I'm curious where and you mentioned some of it already in the context of capitalism. But I am curious in how we can how this could be seen in the context of capitalism and socialism used with this yeah. analogy well, that you have some I thoughts in response to. I do and it I think one thing to think about is with people like thinking about it's, it's, it's worth thinking about why are people thinking about like I want my kid to do this mm -hmm. you know like video games allow you to do this you have this kind of eyes and this your feet you'll have this much strength and people like basically turning um, their kids into like a video game product you know so with this and they want this they want the strongest character possible so that they can climb up a ladder mm -hmm. and their kid will have these advantages I think we're even having some of that with artificial insemination with uh, um, yeah. lesbians looking for certain characteristics mm. and certain men for mm. sperm donation right. and stuff. Go so ahead. well so I I think that that drive, that desire is very much rooted in capitalism, in the competition that's endemic in capitalism. Mm -hmm. That people are feeling like, you know, it's whichever whoever can climb highest out of the bucket, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what this whole thing is. It's like I want my kid to have all these advantages because I feel like I, they, they live in the, essentially the Hunger Games kind of world, mm. you know? Um, and so it, 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 at one level, with, if, you, if you are in that sort of dog-eat-dog -dog system, which mm. Francis Galton just didn't, he didn't just make it that way. He was looking at how the world was around him mm -hmm. and saying, I see in the natural world as much violence and competition and bloodthirstiness as I see in our social system, and I think this is just natural. I think capitalism is natural because this because it mirrors what I think is going on out there in 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 the in the in the uh in the in the animal kingdom which is a very perturbed way of understanding natural selection yes. which we can get into later because yeah, yeah. natural selection is actually about abundance and diversity and growth actually and over a period of thousands of years but but not yeah, but, but it's not a winnowing down actually it's an expansion of species it's, that's what it's trying to describe why why there's more and more things a plurality of things of things that and yes things change but they are actually they exist as a in a balance for a period and then things change and then they find, find a new balance but it was always not attempting Natural selection was not attempting to describe how you were getting this one perfect thing that was master of all. It was actually trying to describe how do you get this whole uh, flourishing and plurality of species from one thing, from bacteria, actually. How do you start with one and create so many? Not how do you start from so many and create one? I mean, that's how Galton, Galton sees it as like, how do you create this perfect thing within this many? And that's an inversion of really what... Uh, Charles Darwin was talking about and trying to explain in the natural world. Mm. Um, so the, the, the thing, that, the, though, that I do believe is that that's how it feels here under capitalism. It mm. feels like it's every person for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's my family for myself. So I got to give my kid every advantage I can give them. And, without, and what is missing from that? When we, when, when we even think of our own lives about what constitutes happiness and contentment, that... That doesn't just exist as an individual. It does exist within a, a society. Within, it exists in a social constant. Finding, feeling if you find the right friends, the right partnerships, 
the right associations. So the notion that, that happiness or contentment or success can be put in your genes, independent of what kind of friends that person finds and life that person has and, and social, like it's, again, that's an inversion. And capitalism gets us to think that way. Mm -hmm. But I think socialism means we, we understand things on a different way. I do think people who make a revolution, a collective revolution, will think much more of like, what sort of society, and wh how, do, how are we in association with one another? And whether your kid has a, what is called a disability, and we have to understand that that notion of disability is a little twisted in our current ed education system, because really it's about what kind of ability do you have actually, yes. you know? Then I don't think those things matter so much to people. I don't think it, like it's about, it's just about finding a place for everyone in that. And, and that's what people are trying to do. That's what people would try to be doing in, in a social, social society, is find their place within the community, you know, and be within that. And that's where your safety lies. It doesn't lie in your individual um, uh, abilities and individual features that allow you to be successful. It's you being in a web uh, of, of relationships um, and that you having a place within that, and that it's a society that know, that believes everyone has a place with that, and everyone has a potential contribution. So in that such a in such a society, there, why would you need to mess with anything, mm. other than okay, I can see, like, well, let's not have some of the diseases and da 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 da. But beyond that, trying to like make stronger this or more intelligent that, I mean, who gets into that? That's kind of weird, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's like just have your kid, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think if we can stop certain diseases, we should. And if yes. we can, and if we can not knock them out before they're born, let's do it. I, I think so. Although I think it has to be discussed and voted on. We can see what the implications are. But uh, I, I think beyond that, why do we need all the other stuff? Mm -hmm. Like, like anything that we all know that many of the things that had have marked us with tragedy, even in our own lives, have been some of the features. Once you overcome that, that you that you're most proud of, that that that, that make you who you are. Mm. You know and. So this notion that about perfection even, that just seems like somehow, somehow to me, that seems capitalist. You know, like that seems like something driven by capitalism, by a capitalist mindset. And I think a socialist mindset doesn't get all worked up about like you, everything's got to be all, you know, we've got to make sure my kid is perfect. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's lights out. Um, that, that I, I think people would think differently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and then you're bringing up an issue where we have also discussed this with um, one of my, my friends where... Uh, I, I, uh, where people, all people, I believe, I believe, all people have an ability to, unless obviously you have some cognitive disability, but all people have a, 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 the possibility to learn a language, or mm -hmm. maybe you're better linguistically, but you still have the access to, or you can be musically inclined, or people can try to, this idea that uh, in intelligence is inherited, and that certain races, such as the Western right. ra race, or right. the Western civilizations have contributed to more, such as right. I hear the rhetoric here, yes. even currently in Correct. our politics. that is true. That uh, only certain people have these inherited characteristics of yeah. smartness is, is, is believed that that is what we should be uh, breeding more of, is a form of that is racism. That is, but, yeah. But yeah. what I'm and it's ignorance too, because like yeah. so much math and science came from the Middle East mm -hmm. and Africa. So algebra, sorry. where did it come from? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the invention of zero. Well, many uh, civilizations, but the Mayans. Mm -hmm. And so it's just um, this is what I currently see the rhetoric even being um, up there being um, fomented. Yeah, um, and and in other ways as well, where even this current administration and just the society in general where uh, immigration should only be allowed on a merit basis mm -hmm. because people should come in with certain characteristics that are desired mm -hmm. and that normally as Trump, I will say because he said this, people from Norway and not people from <laughs> shithole countries such as African <laughs> right, countries. Right. And that is how I think that we should see that it's not just Trump, maybe people have not said those specific words that give Trump the sort of highlight of yeah. believing that this is his words but this is the idea that immigrants should only be here for um, for the improvement in, uh, and that would mean from western civilizations Correct. right and other than that would be just uh, or Canada right or other than that it would just be immigrants uh, I I infecting Correct. 
uh, invading. Israelis invading and infecting and thus should they should be sterilized and right. we have a, hit, a history of that here of people that have been sterilized Latina women in Los Angeles and I want to remind you remember that woman you had talked about who was paying people to be sterilized right right don't, don't let her off the hook but she's not the problem it's, yes it's a national she sterilizes yeah, yes yeah. she sterilizes just so we can give context to our audience she we were talking about this in some episode i forget now i can't remember but it was on a woman being um a um, drug addict women and these were normally people of women of color uh down in the southern states yeah. where she travels in a trailer um paying people for sterilization and her intention according to her it's a uh, documented that she did a little interview with vice and other um, people outlets and they were just saying briefly um, they were, she was saying that she has adopted, she's a white person, but she has adopted black children and all because they were all, um, inf uh, they were born, um, what's it called? Um, alcohol or yeah, babies? Yeah, they were born. addicted or something like that. You know, crack, crack babies or something. I yeah, don't like that yeah, term. Yeah. I don't like that term. No, but th th this is the term that they were using. Yeah. So, anyhow, so. Yes, but you you're talking about something way bigger than her. But I think that, that that past that we have, that is our present, I do believe informs her actions. But, um, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we need to talk about this as far as what laws we can to control people. I think we remember we, we need mm -hmm. to have. I don't know what we're going to name it as, but the topic, by the way, mm -hmm. just FYI, that I don't know you can keep or not. Uh, so that I think is what I wanted to highlight that this is a te biotechnology that has the implications of going back to those darker times because there are people out there that see this as. Just like you were saying, for yeah. capitalists who see this technology for chemical warfare or whatever, because that is their mind, uh, or um, and other people see it for profit, there are other another right. segment of the population that will see this too. Right. We need to use the technology to sort of cut out the characteristics that we need to not have in our society. Yeah, and I would just say that when you're listening to people talk, even scientists who mean well, they always say, "We, we, we could do this. We could do this." It's important to understand that even if, they're, if they don't think they're saying we as a few people, they are only talking about a few people. Mm -hmm. The we is not all of us. This is, and that, that's the first thing we have to remember. And secondly, we, we will not get to decide how these things get used. That is just true, yeah. And, and I don't just mean me and Eduardo. I mean, even at one level, the capitalists will not be able to control these things. They're always letting genies out of the bottle uh, that they can't control here because ultimately... They are driven to use these things to compete with one another, whether it be for profits or for war. And so that, that binds them into a particular relationship with these technologies. They're, th these technologies are amazing, mm. but, they, but in the hands of capitalism, this, in the hands of this system, they can only produce a mess. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to get rid of the system and, and, and make a revolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes. I have one thing to share. Go ahead. One other thing that you can either keep or delete however yeah. you want to. Yeah. But I thought it was what you were saying, Andy, kind of um, brought me back to something that happened to me. It's a sort of a story. Uh, and, mm. and that is, um, you said something about the importance of just having children for the sake of having children, even if, you know, however they turn out to be. Right. And maybe the CRISPR technology could be used for a certain disease or something like that. That's it. But just all these other things that we're looking for in right. children, just why, why <laughs> right, you're saying right. this, no? Yeah. And it just reminded me how I had, myself, had even thought something like this when many years back I was working at uh, a school here in San Francisco, and I, I'm trying to keep this person anonymous, but it was uh, a woman that had wanted um, me to donate my sperm mm. for her mm -hmm. so that she can have children. and. I, when she had first approached me, you know, I didn't know that she was actually trying to, um, it was, she'd taken me out, we'd gone out to, to do an activity together, I won't mention what, because people will pinpoint people who know me, who yeah. she is, but we went to an activity, out. we went out and we were talking and stuff, we'd been hanging out for some time, and, and she had been uh, observing me and stuff, but she was observing me for other reasons, and I didn't know why. But eventually, she asked, "I would like to know if you would be, a, if you'd be open to having uh, artificial insemination hmm. Hmm. and using a donation from you." And I thought, "Pardon me." But, and and she, as I, I, she had told me this, and I, I like, "Do you mean exactly? Let me lay it out concretely. Right. Like, yeah. are we talking about?" And she said, "Yes." And I thought, "I, I normally you would look at." And she had 
money. Uh, and I said, all right, I'm not really interested in money. I'm just interested to know why me? And you know, there's a whole website where mm -hmm. you can look for profiles of mm -hmm. people with blue eyes, green eyes, tall <laughs> people, blonde right, hair, right. and all the, I, all the things I would not make it for right. on that website for their profile. Right. And she, oh, I'm not looking for that. Hmm. And she said, I'm looking for someone that is genuine, loving, a person that I would mm. be considering. And you know, all these flattering things I'm not going to talk about now because I'll get embarrassed. But <laughs> the point being is she, she, she did that and that her I idea was just what you were saying, just to have children right. where she could have the, the access to right. for someone that had all these characteristics that mm -hmm. our society deems beautiful mm -hmm. in the society. Mm -hmm. and. But she was looking at me in a way that all these loving and wonderful things, even physically and stuff, which I appreciate and everything, but it's not that. It's just that she just wanted to have children with someone that she could right. trust that I wouldn't be basically an asshole to the future child. Yeah, but yeah. also feeling that there, may, there might be something, there might be something genetically that makes you who be that she warm person. Some of this yeah, as well. I can imagine. Yeah. And so she's like, it's, it, that is closer to how people have, you know, kind of, brought couples together to, you know I, I get it I yeah can see it. I can see it anyhow I thought when you were talking all that I'd somehow that's this pretty story neat I didn't came up to me I think I remember you telling me that before but I kind of forgotten yeah that. yeah it's yeah. pretty crazy anyways you can choose to add this or we'll not see. but we'll it's but I think it's neat I sort think. of story I think probably it's not be in my head some, some <laughs> modern day genetic engineering between you and that woman. <laughs> no, I'm not That's kind of closer to a version of natural or artificial selection being created by the yeah. Eduardo's kids. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. Did that happen? No. Oh. Because I'm. That's, I. I felt bad. I. I wrote a long uh, email oh. and I declined very respectfully. I get it. Because I, get I, it. I. I don't think I could not be an involved person. I see. I'm very involved. Yeah. That's true. You would. I'm very yes. involved. That's true. I've you know how involved yes. I am. So you would not have been able to keep. I think out. she wanted to. Yeah. Some I'll take. I'll take the sperm, but I don't want the dad. Yeah. Yeah. I get yeah. it. So okay. I don't. I could do that. Anyhow, uh, where are we heading? So this is it. Yeah. Uh, we said. I think that's it for our episode. Yeah. Um, we thought in about two weeks. In two weeks, we're doing identity politics. It seemed a little abrupt how we ended that, didn't it? Nah, it's fine. No? All right, it's fine. Um, it ended with the story. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're yeah. keeping it. I can yeah, see. We are keeping. It. <laughs> Two weeks we're doing identity politics, uh -huh. um, and I think we were thinking maybe impeachment. We'll see. Next week's episode, we still are not sure. Maybe the from New Haven might contact us. We'll never know. Yes. There's a New Haven strike going. Teacher strike. We contacted somebody. Yes, we did. I, I sent an email out. I would uh, really like for them to come out. Yeah. Um, to to really state because I think we focus on Los Angeles and Oakland, but. There's stuff that's going on near Union City that we yeah. need to see what's happening over there. And we've been covering strikes, so yeah. we need to really... And I hopefully they will get back to me. Maybe and this week was too soon for them. Yeah. In the absence of that, then we'll see. Yeah, next week we'll see. But in two weeks from now, we will be discussing Identity. the hotly debated topic that we that even some of the people have been commenting down yeah, we need on to our get YouTube to videos really, really, really are confused by some of the things that we're giving out of context. And I think we need to really cover it so we'll yeah. cover it this month that we said and it'll be identity politics as yes. Andy has said yeah, yeah. Uh, I did want to mention uh, one other thing that has happened just to update people because we did on Sudan uh, and uh, Algeria uh, um, Argelia excuse me not Algeria it's uh, Argelia. Algeria yes that I would, that's how yeah I but would. I'm just correcting in case Spanish okay. speakers are looking at this and they'll okay. be like oh is that how you say it? no no Argelia yeah all right I'm very precious about that. <laughs> all right, all right. Sorry, sorry. Um, when I was contacting, sorry. When I was telling Andy, oh, can you get the name of this Chinese scientist as well? And is can you find out? And Andy's like, ah. Oh, <laughs> and it's like, Andy, what was Road versus Wade? The year, oh, it's in the 70s. <laughs> it's just, oh, Dios mío, Andy, can you get somewhere like around 1973, then? 1973, please. That would it be. Was 73? I'm precious about yeah, those things. Are, and yeah. Ah, the point is what we need to say yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, and you're just sloppy about mm -hmm. these things you just want to get it's somewhere around there <laughs> it's like it's like horseshoes <sighs> just throw them and I was just telling Andy over it sometimes we see this this the way that we do our channel or our episodes is like I'm farsighted he's nearsighted we have different yeah anyhow yeah. Uh, let's get back to track and um, so um, 
what was I saying, MD? It, it was, uh, oh, Sudan. So um, recently, the military, uh, which speaks to what you had said in the last in that episode, recently the the, uh, the the military has now thrown some people into the river and has been killing more than 32 yeah. people. I have read even more than 50 people recently in these couple of days. And the Sudanese people are really calling for a civilian ruled government, mm -hmm. but the military does not want to concede. And they are trying to have elections in nine months. And this is something that is being, the military is being supported by um, Saudi Arabia, United by States. Egypt, the US. I don't know about that. I didn't read United that. Do you know this? Saudi, yes, if Saudi Arabia is just, oh, if Saudi Arabia is supporting them, I don't even have to know. <laughs> United States is supporting it. Go ahead and check me on it. Go ahead, everyone down there. Thank I'm you. calling my check right now. United States supports the Sudanese criminals over there. I, I, I'm not going to All say... All you had to do with Saudi Arabia, then it was done. So this is... Uh, so the military is not willing to, to um, have any, any civilian roads government. And so my heart goes out to them. I think we need to cover this. I was listening to... Not us, we have already covered, but I think it needs to be said. Yeah. So this is why I mentioned it at the end yeah. of this episode and giving people an update. But I heard a whole uh, segment on KPFA and, and no, even on the democracy now today. So um, where is the media, the mainstream media? I don't know, but anyhow. Well, that's because it's not just Trump that supports what's going on in Sudan. The Democrats do as well. Yeah. 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 All right. Anyway, uh, how can people find this thing? Right. It, please <laughs> find us. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. Find us on, uh, on a iTunes podcast, a Stitcher, BitChute. A I especially like your comments on BitChute. <laughs> Someone's been troll hunting. <laughs> Come bring it on, pitch you people. Come on. I want to hear your comments. <laughs> pitch you. Too. Oh, God. Andy, it's no the, more. The crazy libertarian rights out there. You know? Bi uh, okay. iTunes Podcast, Stitcher, Bitch uh, Google Play, and YouTube. Uh, please rate, review, and subscribe. I love, and share with I love my bitch shoot audience. <laughs> Even <laughs> you nut jobs. <laughs> All right, we'll All right. catch you next Take week. Take care. Gracias, chao. <laughs>